In today's lesson, we are finding general solutions using separation of variables. And what that basically means is if you start with a differential equation, dy over dx equals 5x squared over 6y squared. Essentially what we're doing is we're going to do an antiderivative of implicit equations. So the method is called separation of variables. So basically what we're going to do is get our variables on opposite sides. I'm gonna start by multiplying both sides by six y squared. So usually we work on getting our y's to the left and our x's to the right. So six y squared dy dx equals five x squared. And now what we're gonna do is get this dy, or sorry, the dx to the other side. So I'm gonna treat that like a fraction and multiply both sides by dx. So now I have six y squared dy equals five x squared dx. And what we're gonna do is take the integral of both sides. So on the left, the antiderivative of 6y squared is 6y to the third over 3 plus a constant equals 5x to the third over 3 plus a constant. So now when we do that, well, our goal is to solve for y. Now what I want you to think about is this is like a constant, we'll call it c1, and this is a different constant, c2. So when I subtract... Here on the left, those constants will cancel, but this constant doesn't cancel. What is it? It equals just some other constant. So what I have, I'm going to change that to 2y to the third equals 5 thirds x to the third plus, I'm still just going to call it c. And then if I divide both sides by 2, Dividing both of those by 2, which is the same as just multiplying by 1 half. I'll have y to the third over, or equals 5 over 6, x to the third plus, okay, so I have a constant divided by 2. Well, that's still just a constant. So I'm going to just keep calling that c. And then to get y by itself, we could either cube root both sides or just raise both sides to the power of 1 third. So our final answer could be y equals 5, 6, x to the third plus a constant all raised to the power of 1 third. So that is kind of the basis of today's lesson, finding these general solutions. So all of our answers will have that plus c in it. All right, example two, dy over dx equals y times x plus 2. So we want to separate those variables. So let's move that y to the left. We could divide by y, which is the same as just multiplying both sides by 1 over y to cancel that out. So I will have 1 over y, and I'm just going to multiply both sides by that dx as well. So 1 over y dy equals x plus 2 dx, take the integral of both sides. Okay, the integral antiderivative of 1 over y, if you remember, that is the natural log of the absolute value of y plus c, equals on the right side, that would be x squared over 2 plus 2x plus c. And as you go through these, you'll kind of get the hang of it, and you'll kind of just stop doing the plus C on the left, because moving it over, we're still going to keep that just a C. So now we have a logarithmic equation. How do we solve that? Well, natural log has base E, so we could change this to its exponential form. E to the power of all of this equals Y. Or in other words, Y equals E to the power of x squared over 2 plus 2x plus c. Now, that is technically correct, 
but I do have to show you this other thing so you can recognize it if it shows up in multiple choice. Um, go back to algebra one probably. If we have x squared times x to the third, that is the same as x to the two plus three. So notice how our exponent has addition. So just with the C, we can rewrite it this way. Y equals E to the X squared over two plus two X, and then times same base to the power of C. So that is using this property of exponents backwards. And now multiplying, okay, E to the C that is just a constant, C. So how you will probably see this written is actually a coefficient of C. And then E to the power of X squared over two plus two X. And that right there is your final answer. All right, example three of four. So DY over DX equals Y squared times sine X. All right, to move the y to the left, you can multiply by one over y squared, and then you can multiply both sides by that dx. So one over y squared dy equals, and then take the integral of both sides. So remember that would be y to the negative two. So this would turn into y to the negative one over negative one equals, negative cosine of x plus c. So notice how I didn't put the plus c here, I just have it on the right side. And now if I rewrite this as negative one over y equals negative cosine x plus c, um, we can multiply both sides by negative one. So one over y equals, it will go to positive cosine x, and then you could think of it as switching to minus c, but it's still a constant, so you don't need to change the sign. You can just leave it as plus c. So now to get y by itself, y would be equal to 1 over cosine of x plus c. And here is our last example. dy over dx equals 3e to the power of x minus y. So how in the world do I separate when they're both in the exponent? Well, if you go back to those properties of exponents again, do you remember if you had, let's say, x to the 10th over x to the third, that is the same thing as x to the 10 minus three. So if you work that backwards for our problem, we'll have dy over dx equals 3e e to the x over e to the y. And now we can multiply both sides by e to the y. And multiply both sides by the dx, so e to the y dy equals 3e e to the x dx. Take the integral of both sides antiderivative of e to the y is just e to the y equals and then antiderivative e to the x so 3 e to the x and then there's my plus c how do we solve for y when you have an exponential equation you take the log of both sides so in this case we could take the natural log of both sides because that will cancel this out and leave you with your y so y equals the natural log of 3e to the x plus c. And that is your final answer. So there's your full video on finding general solutions using separation of variables. Good luck with the lesson.